Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to my channel. This is actually a continuation of the dissection series. So I'll just start, I will add uh, points uh, daily so that it will be easy for you while you do the dissection. Uh, and uh, I will give you a WhatsApp number uh, in which uh, I have started a discussion forum for the first year students, especially for the first year students, those who are, so those who are interested, you can join, uh, you can just uh, send me a message with your name and college and I will add you to the group. And in the group, uh, we will be sharing the images and we'll be having a discussion on a daily basis. So those who are seeing this video on this section series for the first time, please do watch uh, the previous series. Uh, then only you will get a credibility. So in the last session, uh, we have done um, a series on axilla part one. Uh, so we have discussed about the axilla, the boundaries and contents and all in that. In this session, I am planning to discuss about axillary artery and uh, the brachial plexus. So the details of the axillary artery, the relations, the brachial plexus, how it is formed and all I will be doing at, as a lecture class. But this is just a briefing given to you uh, so that it will be easy for you to jo just focus uh, in your dissection hours. Okay, so first we will start with the axillary artery. Axillary artery, we all know, uh, it is divided into three parts by the key muscle pectoralis minor into first part, second part and third part. First part above the pectoralis minor, second part beneath the pectoralis minor and third part below the pectoralis minor. And the easiest way to remember the branches arising from the axillary artery are one from first part, two from second part and three from third part. So the one from first part is superior thoracic artery. Uh, two from second part is thoracoacromial artery and the lateral thoracic artery. And from the third part, you have the anterior and posterior circumflex humeral arteries. So these are just winding around the surgical neck of humerus anteriorly and posteriorly. Uh, that's very important. And uh, subscapular artery, that is said to be the largest branch of the axillary artery, which further divides into circumflex scapular and thoracodosal arteries. These are the important arteries. Now, how you locate all these arteries while doing the dissection? Uh, first part, uh, you have the superior thoracic artery. It is actually a very slender branch. Uh, second part, thoracoacromial artery, we have already seen uh, it along with the structures piercing the clavi pectoral fascia, the thoracoacromial artery, which has got four components, uh, two, uh, two to the bones and two to the muscles. The two bones are clavicle and acromion and the muscles are pectoralis major and deltoid. So all these are the branches arising from the thoracoacromial artery which is piercing the clavipetral fascia. Now the second branch from the second part is the lateral thoracic artery which is actually running along with the long thoracic nerve of bell and both are supplying the serratus anterior. So the artery and nerve accompanied by it, it can be asked as a one mark question or it can be asked during uh, as a sub question for the SA or as a short note etc. Now from the third part, the anterior and posterior circumflex humeral which were winding around the surgical neck of humerus, the posterior circumflex humeral artery is actually accompanied by axillary nerve. That was one of the questions asked for the university exam last time. So, axillary nerve is accompanied by the posterior circumflex humeral artery. That point also you have to remember. So, during this session, uh, if you get the axillary nerve, if you can locate the axillary nerve, the artery going along with it is the posterior circumflex humeral artery. Then the subscapular artery which is moving down divides into circumflex scapular and thoracodosal. Circumflex scapular will be winding around the scapula and thoracodosal artery will be going uh, towards the latissimus dorsi. You know the thoracodosal nerve, isn't it? So along with that, uh, the artery also will be moving towards the latissimus dorsi. That is how you identify these two. Uh, now, uh, which are the structures lying between the axillary artery and axillary vein we discussed in the last session. Uh, so we will uh, now move on uh, to the brachial plexus, how this brachial plexus is formed. And actually the brachial plexus is nothing but the bunch of nerves which are going to supply the upper limb. So the brachial plexus actually arises from the uh, C5 to T1 spinal segments, C5 to T1. So before you uh, move on with the brachial plexus proper, you need to know the structure of the typical spinal nerve. It's uh, given in Cunningham, uh, that beautiful diagram. You have to study that diagram. It can be asked as draw diagram as well. So uh, we know if you take a section of the spinal cord, there is a ventral root and a dorsal root. Uh, which are arising from the ventral horn and the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. Ventral horn of spinal cord is actually motor. Uh, that means the nerve which goes 
to supply the muscles in order to produce an action and the sensory root is the dorsal horn sensory means all the sensations so you have the ventral root arising from the ventral horn dorsal root arising from the dorsal horn together it forms a typical spinal nerve which further divides into a dorsal ramus which goes and supplies the posterior aspect and a ventral ramus which goes and supply the anterior aspect this is a typical spinal nerve this idea you should have now we are going to talk about the brachial plexus so brachial plexus is actually formed by the ventral ramus dorsal ramus is not taking part in the formation of brachial plexus so the ventral ramus means the anterior branch of the typical spinal nerve or the spinal nerve which is coming anteriorly so this ventral ramus is known as the root of the brachial plexus so most of the students i have seen they are confusing with this root of brachial plexus with the root of the spinal nerve which was actually the ventral root arising from the ventral horn so don't confuse it with the root of the typical spinal nerve when we say the root of brachial plexus it is actually the ventral ramus of the spinal nerve which we are referring as the root of brachial plexus so we have c5 6 7 8 and t1 ventral rami or otherwise known as the roots of brachial plexus then what happens the c5 and c6 roots join together to form the trunk which is seen in the upper part you call it as upper trunk then you have the seventh you have uh, you call it as middle trunk and 8 and t1 the ventral rami fuse together the roots actually the roots of the brachial plexus fuse together to form the lower trunk so you can just imagine it uh, like a tree you have the roots join together to form the trunk of the tree once the trunk is formed it divides into two branches uh, or two divisions uh, for your ac understanding the one which goes anteriorly you call it as anterior division the one which goes posteriorly you call it as posterior division so our three trunks the upper trunk middle trunk and lower trunk will be having uh, divisions anteriorly and posteriorly all the posterior divisions of these three trunks together forms the posterior cord of brachial plexus whereas the anterior divisions of the upper and middle trunk forms the lateral cord and the anterior division of the lower trunk forms the medial cord so this is how you get the formation of the uh, lateral cord medial cord and posterior cord so when we do the dissection we know all the rami will be higher up and uh, once it forms uh, uh, so the, these ventral rami are the roots of the brachial plexus then you have the trunk up to the trunk it will be uh, reaching only up to the clavicle and after the trunk the divisions and cords so it is the cords which you see below the clavicle that is in the infraclavicular region you will be able to visualize the cords of brachial plexus and these cords medial cord lateral cord and posterior cord are named according to its relation with the second part of axillary artery that also you have to remember now uh, there are branches arising from the root there are branches arising from the trunk and there are branches arising from the cords of the brachial plexus i'll be doing a detailed session on it so uh, while you see this session please keep your brachial plexus in front of you and please keep your typical spinal nerve diagram in front of you then you you try to compare and find uh, what i'm trying to convey okay uh, so now we have the lateral cord medial cord and posterior cord uh, find out what are the branches arising from the root of the brachial plexus so it is the ventral rami it is not the root of the spinal nerve you have to keep that point in your mind uh, so the root of the brachial plexus then you have the trunk from the upper trunk you have suprascapular and nerve to subclavius uh, so that is the upper trunk the branches arising from the upper trunk uh, so only from the upper trunk we have a major contribution the two major nerves uh, then from the root Uh, of course in the lower aspect and all you have some contributions to intercostal but the main branches if we say from the trunk you have from the upper trunk they are the suprascapular nerve and nerve to subclavius uh, from the root of brachial plexus we have the dorsal scapular and long thoracic nerve and of course a minor contribution to the phrenic nerve now we are moving on to the cords of brachial plexus lateral cord medial cord and posterior cord lateral cord the cord is lml lateral pectoral nerve muscular cutaneous nerve and lateral root of median nerve lateral pectoral nerve we have already seen piercing the clavicular fascia uh, 
Muscular cutane is now the easiest way to identify as uh, the one which is entering the coracobrachialis and biceps. Then you have the lateral root of median nerve which is actually lying in front of the brachial artery and this lateral root fuses with the medial root to form the main median nerve. Okay. Now coming to the medial cord, the cord is me, uh, my mummy makes me ugly, 4M and 1U. Okay, my mummy makes me ugly, 4M and U. So, 1M is median, medial root of median nerve. So, the lateral and medial root will be fusing together to form the median nerve in front of the brachial, uh, in front of the axillary artery. Okay, in front of the axillary artery. Now, uh, you have the next two nerves. Oh, uh, the next nerve will be the medial pectoral nerve which we have already seen. The next two nerves are the two cutaneous nerve of arm and forearm. That is medial cutaneous nerve of arm, then the medial cutaneous nerve of forearm. So the medial nerve is actually formed in front of the brachial artery by joining uh, of the medial and lateral root. The lateral root from the, coming from the lateral cord and medial root coming from the medial cord. Uh, so and finally you have the ulnar nerve which is lying between the axillary artery and axillary vein. Now uh, so all these uh, nerves you can very well visualize within the axilla. Now the posterior cord is actually lying behind the axillary artery and from the posterior cord you have uh, the cord is ultra. So U stands for upper subscapular, L stands for lower subscapular, then T stands for thoracodorsal. Then R stands for radial, radial nerve and A stands for axillary nerve. Out of all these branches of the brachial plexus, radial nerve is the thickest and you can very easily visualize it as a continuation of the posterior cord beneath the axillary artery, radial nerve. Then axillary nerve we have already mentioned going along with the posterior circumflex humeral artery. Then the upper and lower subscapular can be seen uh, in the upper part and in from the middle you can see the thoracodosal nerve as well. So this is in nutshell about the uh, axillary artery as well as the brachial plexus. We will continue the session in the next series. Uh, so please let me know whether it is useful for you and thank you. Thanks for watching. Please do share if you find it useful with your friends.